Hello, and uh, welcome to the section 3.6 lecture video. Um, so we'll be talking about today is the chain rule. So the chain rule is really important because it allows us to take derivatives of composition of functions. So anything like um, if you have a polynomial but then raise that to a power, you can use the chain rule to find that. Or if I'm taking the square root of something bigger than just x, I need the chain rule to do that. Or if I have an expression inside of a trig function, I need the chain rule. So this is a very important rule, um, which is why it gets its own section in the book. So take out your notes. Um, either you can just use paper and pencil writer, or you can find these notes um, that I'm using in the Blackboard course or on my math lab, uh, and turn to page 30, and we'll get started with the chain rule. So the chain rule says if f of u is differentiable at point u and g of x, and u equals g of x, and g of x is differentiable at x, then the composition... Um, function c of, or that's not the right letter, f of g of x, or f of g of x, is differentiable at x, and f, uh, f prime, and equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So the idea behind the chain rule and is that if you uh, want to take the derivative of a function within a function, you take the derivative of the outside function and just leave the inside alone, and then you multiply that by the derivative of the outside function. So in Leibniz notation, it looks like this. If y equals f of u and u equals g of x, then dy over dx is equal to dy over, um, inter taking the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x, where dy over du is equivalent to u equals g of x. Um, so um, is evaluated at u equals g of x. So there's a few different ways to do this. One is to use this idea of this u notation, um, and the other is to um, think of it as taking the derivative of the outside function <coughs> and then working your way in. Um, so let's just go ahead and try this first one using substitution, and then I'll see where we're at after that. So, in this case, what you're looking for is you're looking for a u, that if, an expression that if you replace it with u, you'd be able to find the derivative of that expression. So, like, for example here, the problem is that we've got this expression inside of the square root that um, if we took it out, we'd be able to do the derivative, right? So, if I let u equal 3x squared minus 4x plus 6, then that would make this y equals the square root of u. And we know how to take the derivative of the square root of u, right? We've talked about that before. The derivative of the square root of u is, um, y, uh, so y prime would be 1 over 2 square root of u. Okay? Now, when we're doing that, we also have to find the derivative of u. Right, so if u is 3x squared minus 4x, we need also need to find the derivative of u. So the derivative of u would be 6x minus 4. And then what we do is we multiply these two together and we substitute back into u. So um, our actual final deriv derivative will end up being 1 over 2 root u times 6 minus 4, 6x minus 4, and we're going to substitute back into u. So y prime is 6x minus 4 over 2 times the square root of 3x squared minus 4x plus 6. So that's how you would do the chain rule using this idea of u substitution. Now I could also do the same problem with the chain rule by just thinking of it as take the derivative of the outside and multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Okay, so what is the derivative of uh, the square root, well, the derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 times the square root. So that would be 1 over 2 times the square root of 3x squared minus 4x plus 6. And then we need we haven't taken the derivative of the inside yet, so we're going to multiply that by the derivative of 3x squared minus 4x plus 6. So y prime is 1 over 2 times the square root of 3x squared minus 4x plus 6 times 6x minus 4, which is 
6x minus 4 over 2 times the square root of 3x squared minus 4x plus 6. And as I was doing this one, I noticed that I could simplify it a little bit more. So that would be um, y prime, I can cancel out a 2, right? Because 6 and 4 both divide by 2. So this would be 3x minus 2 over the square root of 3x squared minus 4x plus 6. Okay, so that's the idea. Those are the two different ways to do it. The one on the right here in orange is my preferred method. And the reason I like it is because it's a little cleaner, it's a little neater, and it also works, as we'll see later, better for doing the chain rule multiple times in a row. Because if you have multiple functions built together, you're going to have to do the chain rule more than once. Okay, so let's look at another example uh, together. And once again, we can do it both ways. But And if you like this one on the left in blue, that's great. Uh, but like I said, I'll probably mostly in this class be using the one on the right, the method on the right. So in this case, one of the things you have to be careful with is the way we write exponents uh, for trig functions. So what this actually would be would look like this. Right, that's what cosine to the negative fourth of x means. It means cosine of x to the fourth negative fourth power. So the outside function here is this negative four, the exponent of negative four. So the inside function is what we want to let u be. So in this case, we'd let u equal the cosine of x. And then we would, so that would make y equal to five u to the negative fourth. So we would find that derivative. So that would be y prime equals negative 20 u to the negative fifth, right? Because we multiply by the exponent and then subtract one times the derivative of u. So the derivative of u here would be the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x. And so then we multiply that all together and substitute back in for u. So this would end up being y prime equals 20 times uh, cosine to the negative fifth is x times sine of x would be the final answer for the derivative. Right, so that's one way to write that. Do you actually write out the u substitution? The other way is it would look like this. So I'd be like, okay, so I have to do the outside derivative first. So the outside derivative is this negative 4. So we do that. So that's negative 20 cosine to the negative fifth of x times the derivative of the inside because I still need to take the derivative of cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative 20 cosine to the negative fifth of x times negative sine x. So this is 20 cosine to the negative fifth of x sine x. So you get the same way, same answer either way. Okay, so what I'd like you all to do now, I think, is go ahead and try. Yeah, go ahead and try um, these problems here using the chain rule. So pause your video and try these using the chain rule. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to try these, let's run through them together. So for the first one, the outside function is this 9. So that's a exponent, so we do the exponent rule. So bring the 9 out in front. Subtract 1 from the exponent, so we get 9 times 4 minus 3x to the 8th. But we haven't done the derivative of the inside. So then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of 4 minus 3x. So that's negative 3. So y prime is negative 27 times 4 minus 3x to the 8th. Okay, so that's the idea. Same idea on the second one. It's a power again. So I'm going to do the power rule. So negative 10 times the square root of x over 2 minus 1 to the negative 11th times the derivative of the inside. Square root of x over 2 minus 1. So that's negative 10 times the square root of x over 2 minus 1 to the negative 11th times this derivative. The derivative of the square root of x is 1 half times 1 over 2 root x, right? Because the divided by 2 is a constant. The derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 root x, and the derivative of negative 1 is 0. So then we can multiply this all together, uh, and we get negative 5 times the square root of x over 2 minus 1 to the negative 11th over 
to root x. Okay, and I forgot my prime notation, so let me add that back in. Okay, and then the last one. The outside function is cotangent. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So negative cosecant squared of pi minus 1 over x times the derivative of the inside, which is pi minus 1 over x. So we do that derivative. So the derivative of pi is 0. Derivative of negative 1 over x is negative, uh, negative 1 times 1 over x squared. Right? Because we um, multiply by the opposite of the exponent, which is the exponent here is when we're uh, in the denominator, is 1. So we multiply by negative 1, and then we add 1 to the exponent. So then I multiply this all together, and we get negative cosecant squared of pi minus 1 over x all over x squared. Right? Because negative times negative is positive, so those cancel. And we just live with the x squared. Okay, so there's five examples of using the chain rule. Now, unfortunately for us, when it comes to complication of problems, we're not always going to just use the chain rule. We might also need to use some of our other rules along with the chain rule. So that's what we're looking at here, is how to use uh, multiple rules at the same time. So if I look at this one, I'm multiplying two things together. So the first thing I need to do is the product rule. So y prime is the first thing times the derivative of the second thing plus the derivative of the first thing times the second thing. Okay? And to do these two derivatives, we're going to need to use the chain rule. So y prime is 2x minus 5 to the negative first times, take the derivative of the outside, so 6 times x squared minus 5x to the fifth, and then multiply by the derivative of x squared minus 5x. And then on the second one, we do the derivative of the outside. So that's going to be plus negative 1 uh, times 2x minus 5 to the negative second times the derivative of the inside. So times the derivative of 2x minus 5 times x squared minus 5x to the sixth. Okay, so now we keep going. So y prime equals 2x minus 5 um, times 6 times x squared minus 5x to the fifth times the derivative of uh, x squared minus 5 is 2x minus 5. minus 2x minus 5 to the negative second times the derivative of 2x minus 5, which is 2, times x squared minus 5x to the sixth. Okay? And so now we need to simplify. So 2x minus 5 to the negative first times 2x minus 5 is just 1. So these cancel. So for the first term, we get 6 times x squared minus 5x to the fifth. And for the second term... Uh, those don't really multiply together, so we get minus 2 times 2x minus 5 to the negative second times x squared minus 5x to the sixth. And there's our derivative. Okay, so that's the idea. So you can put these rules together. So that's what's going to happen in the second one too, right? We've got a quotient, so I need to use the quotient rule. So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. Okay. The derivative of tangent uh, this is, we're going to have to use the chain rule again because we've got a function within a function. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So secant squared of 3x 
times the derivative of 3x minus, we have to use the chain rule, so 4 times x plus 7 to the third minus uh, times the derivative of the inside, x plus 7, times the tangent of 3x, all over x plus 7 to the 8th. Okay? So now we keep going. So we've got y prime equals um, x plus 7 to the 4th, times the secant of 3x, times 3, minus 4 times x plus 7 to the third. The derivative of x plus 7 is just 1 times the tangent of 3x all over x plus 7 to the eighth. And now we can do a little simplification and then I think we'll be done. So one thing we can simplify here is all of these have, all these terms have at least one x plus 7. Here we've got four of them, here we have three of them, and here we have eight of them. So what we can do is we cancel out three of them. So this one goes away completely, this will become a 1, and this will become a 5. Okay, so y prime is x plus 7, and just for simplicity, I'm going to bring this multiplied by 3, right? I can write multiplication in any order I want, so I'm going to bring the 3 out front. So 3 times x plus 7 times secant of 3x minus 4 times tangent of 3x all over x plus 7 to the fifth. Okay, so that's the idea there. So at this point, why don't you guys pause, pause the video for a moment uh, and try doing this last one uh, on your own. Okay, so now that you've all tried this on your own, let's go through it together. So here, we'd actually start with the chain rule, right? Because that's we have a function within a function. So the derivative cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So of sine t of t times the derivative of the inside. Okay, and because we're doing the derivative of a quotient, we have to use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule take top, I mean bottom, times the derivative of the top minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. So we still have negative cosecant squared of sine t over t. The derivative of sine t is cosine t, so this would be t cosine t minus the derivative of t is just 1, so minus sine t over t squared. Okay, and I think that is as simplified as we can get. So that's the idea. Okay, now the next thing here is what happens. Oh, actually, I think I meant for us to do that last one together and have you guys try these. Um, but we'll, I think we've done enough examples of these for now, so I think we're going to skip these. If you want to try these on your own and email me to see what the answers are, or if you have questions, feel free to do that. Um, but let's go ahead and skip ahead uh, to these next problems. So these next problems are all about having to use the chain rule more than once. And this will be the last thing we'll talk about in this section. And this is where I really think it's in the second method we talked about for doing these is most important without doing the u substitution. Because for some of these, to do it with u substitution, you'd have to substitute um, a bunch of times, six, seven times of substitution. And that just gets really complicated or confusing and you have a lot of variables running around. So it's easiest to think about this as doing the outside function and leaving the inside alone and then finding the derivative of that inside. So for example, here in this first one, we have to find the outside function. The outside function simply means the last thing you would do in order of operations. So if I were to plug a number in for t, the first thing I would do is multiply by three, then take the secant of it, then square it, then find the cosine of that, and then do the fourth power. So this fourth power is the outside function. So to find y prime, we're going to start by doing the power rule. 
So this would be 4 cosine to the third of secant squared 3, uh, secant squared 3t. Notice all I did was deal with the exponent times the derivative of the inside. The inside here was cosine, right? We dealt with the exponent, so the cosine goes away. Cosine of secant squared 3t. And that's all we're going to do here. We're just going to keep working down. So when you have this multiple times, you're just going to do this over and over again. Keep doing the outside function and move the derivative of the outside function and write the derivative of the inside function and then do that next and keep going. So y prime, if we keep going, is 4 cosine cubed of secant squared 3t. That stays the same. And now we do the derivative of the inside of this function. So the outside function now is this cosine. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we've got negative sine secant squared 3t times the derivative of the inside. And the inside now is secant squared 3t. And so with these first two pieces, I can multiply them together to simplify them a little. So y prime is negative, uh, 4 times negative is negative 4. So this is negative 4 cosine cubed secant squared 3t times sine of secant squared 3t. And now we need to deal with this. Well, the inside, the outside function here is this power, right? The last thing we would do is square whatever we got for the secant. So we use the power rule. So the power rule says I bring the two out in front and I subtract one from the exponent. So that becomes two secant 3t. And then I'm gonna multiply that by the derivative of the inside, which is secant 3t. So y prime, multiply the things we've already simplified together and then deal with the derivative. So negative four times two is negative eight cosine cubed of secant squared 3t times sine of secant squared 3t times secant 3t. And now we do the derivative of secant 3t. So the derivative of secant Right, the derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. So this would be secant 3t times tangent 3t, okay, times the derivative of the inside. And we only have one thing left, which is the 3t. So y prime is negative 8 cosine cubed secant squared 3t sine of secant squared 3t. And then we can multiply these together, right, a little bit, because secant 3t times secant 3t is secant squared 3t times tangent 3t. And then we do the derivative of 3t, which is just 3. And so we can multiply that 3 out in front. So y prime is negative 24 cosine cubed of secant squared 3t times sine squared 3, uh, sine, not sine squared, sine of secant squared 3t times secant squared 3t tangent of 3t. And that's the final answer. So for every function that was in a function, you have to take, uh, you're going to end up with another thing that's going to get multiplied together. And we can multiply those all together. So in this case, we had 1 two, four, uh, to the fourth power cosine. Um, to the second power, secant, and then multiply by three. So we had five functions. So we've got one, two, three, four, five times we took the derivative, and then the last step where we multiplied it all together and simplified. Okay. So the same idea happens if we're dealing with square these square roots. We've got a square root within a square root within a square root. So to do this, we're going to start with the outside square root and work our way down. So let's just work through these steps together again. So the first thing we deal with is this outside function, which is this first square root. So y prime, the derivative of a square root is 1 over 2 times that square root. So that would be 3t plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t. Okay, so that's the derivative of the outside times the derivative 
of the inside, which is 3t plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t. So then we do that derivative. So the first thing stays the same, 1 over 2 times the square root of 3t plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t. And the derivative of this would be 3 plus, and then we do the square root of the inside here. So the square, uh, we do, we have to use the chain rule to take the derivative of this square root. So this would be 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t. Sorry, 1 minus t times the derivative of the inside, which the derivative of the inside is 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t. Okay? Uh, and so now we can do a couple things as we're working through these. I can distribute. So I've got 3 times this, so 3 over 2 times the square root of 3t plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t. And then I'm going to multiply it by this as well. So I've got um, 1 over 2 times the square root of 3t plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t times 1 over 2 times the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t. And then I'm going to multiply that by this derivative that I haven't done yet. So let's do this derivative. The deriv derivative of 2 is just um, 0. So that goes away. So we're doing the derivative of the square root. Well, there's something inside the square root. So this would be times do the derivative of the square root, which is 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 minus t. And then we're going to need to multiply that by the derivative of 1 minus t. OK? So let's go ahead and talk about that derivative first before I multiply this all together because it's a lot to write. And so we'll try and write it in one step. So I'm going to need to multiply these all together. Uh, they don't really multiply together that well, although I can try. Um, actually, there is a way to kind of write that out and we'll get to that. But notice the derivative of this last piece here at the end is going to be negative 1. So what that's going to do is it's going to change this to a minus and then we'll deal with multiplying this all together. So this would be y prime equals 3 over 2 times the square root of 3t plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t plus 1 over, and then we've got, uh, sorry, not plus, minus, right, because the derivative of this was negative 1, so that's going to make this a minus, 1 over, we want to multiply these 2s together, so that's going to give us 8, and then um, when you multiply square roots together, what you can do is you take what's under the square roots and multiply them together. So this could be the square root of 3t plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t times 2 plus the square root of 1 minus t times 1 minus t. And that's what we get for that term. So that's really complicated. But the key thing is you just keep working your way in and out. It's like an onion. You're peeling back layers uh, to get further and further inside of it. Or nesting dolls, like Russian nesting dolls, it's like that idea. We're getting, um, you're taking away one layer at a time until you get down to the variable itself. So what I'd like you all to do now is flip to the last page of this section, pause the video for a moment, and try doing these three that have are going to need the chain rule at least... Um, twice, if not more. Okay, so now that all of you have tried the this one, let's go and run through this together. So, um, the first one, the function on the outside, is the cosine. Okay, so we'll do that first. So this would be negative sine, right? The derivative of cosine is a negative sine of 5 sine of t over 3 times the derivative of 5 sine t over 3, okay? So just copy down the part we've already taken the derivative of and then do this derivative. So the derivative of 5 sine t over 3, well, we've got a function within a function, so do the outside. 
So that would be the derivative of sine is cosine. So that would be 5 cosine t over 3 times the derivative of t over 3. Okay, so now just like in the previous problems, we can multiply these two first pieces together to the best of our ability, which would be negative times 5, which is negative 5 sine of 5 sine t over 3 times 5, uh, not 5, I already used the 5, times the cosine of t over 3, and then times the derivative of this. The derivative of t over 3 is 1 third. So the final answer is negative 5 thirds sine of 5 sine t over 3 times the cosine of t over 3. Okay, so that's the idea. Okay, second one, the 1 6 is a constant, so we're just going to kind of bring that along for the ride, right? It's a constant multiple. So the outside function is this exponent 3. So it'll be 1 6, take this derivative, so times 3. Um, of 1 plus cosine squared of 7t squared times the derivative of the inside. So what's inside the exponent, which is 1 plus cosine squared 7t. So y prime is 1 6 times 3 is 1 half times 1 plus cosine squared of 7t squared. Derivative of 1 is 0, so that's going to go away. Derivative of cosine squared 7t, I need to deal with this exponent first. So that'll be times 2 cosine of 7t times the derivative of cosine of 7t. Multiply the 1 half times 2 and get 1, so those cancel. And so we're left with 1 plus cosine squared 7t squared times cosine of 7t times the derivative of cosine 7t. Well, the derivative of Cosine is negative sine times the derivative of 7t. So y prime equals the opposite of 1 plus cosine squared 7t squared cosine 7t times sine t 7t times 7. So the final answer here is negative 7, 1 plus cosine squared 7t squared Cosine of 7t, sine of 7t. Okay, so that's that one. And then the last one. So the last one also has a constant multiple out in front. So that's just going to come along. So y prime equals 4. The outside function is sine, so the uh, derivative of sine is cosine of the square root of 1 plus the square root of t times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of the inside is the square root of 1 plus the square root of t. So then we're going to multiply that. We're going to find that derivative. So 4 cosine of the square root of 1 plus the square root of t times the derivative of the square root is 1 over 2 times the square root times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of the inside is 1 plus the square root of t. So we can multiply these together. So y prime equals uh, 4 divided by 2 is just 2 cosine of the square root of 1 plus the square root of t over the square root of 1 plus the square root of t, and then times this derivative. The derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of the square root of t is 1 over 2 root t. Okay, and then we can multiply those together. So the 2s cancel, so it's cosine of the square root of 1 plus the square root of t over, and then we can multiply these together. So uh, that would be the square root of t plus t root t. Okay. And that's it for the chain rule. I know this is a little bit complicated, but it just takes practice. So the more you practice these, the better you'll get at it. And eventually you'll be able to do them just like I'm doing them here. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, and as always, make sure you're doing all the homework um, and have a good week.